Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code Drayson12 on the link below. Rick's Corner, the man, the myth, the legend, now on with the show. Welcome to Rick's Corner. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, at Bakersfield this day I grew up with. He was a power lifter. We talked quite often. He was telling me about all my stories and how funny they are, how I should keep telling him on my show. And we talked about a few that had happened. He said, there's one you should talk about because that's pretty funny. Um, my life has been crazy as far as growing up and bodybuilding and wrestling and things that I've done that I really enjoyed. And back in high school, I had a rock band. As you all know, I played guitar. And we would play for after school dances. Well, in those days, they had a curfew. You can't be out past 10 o'clock if you're under 18. I don't know if that still applies today or not. And we would have to be home, but a lot of us would stay out. So we, we ended up at Shakey's Pizza Parlor one night. And it was after 10, it was around 11. And um, sometimes you could convince them into selling you a beer. It was 25 cents a, a glass, $1.25 a pitcher. That's pretty cheap. So we were hanging out, and all of a sudden, here comes the sheriff's department. And they start to round everybody up. And they uh, took me and a bunch of people down to the sheriff's department, and they called our parents to come pick us up. So I'm sitting at a t desk that belonged to a sheriff who had a TV show on the side in the morning. It's a kid's TV show, almost like Sheriff John, one of those things you see through the years, but it's called Deputy Howie. It's about cartoons and safety for children and things like that, and I knew who he was. He was a TV celebrity as well as a sheriff. So I was sitting at his desk, and I pulled out some paper, and I started drawing my cartoons that I normally do, because that's what I do. And then I signed them, and I stuck them back in the desk. I never thought anything about it. I just did it just for fun and let it go. That following Monday, I get a phone call from him. Are you Rick Drayson? I said, yeah. He said, did you draw some cartoons at the Sheriff's Department and stick them on the desk? I said, yes. He says, I need to talk to you. I want you to come down here. Okay. So I came down there and he says, are these yours? I said, yes. He says, you're really good at what you do. How would you like a job? Job doing what? He says, drawing cartoons on my kiddie's show in the morning, I have on every morning from 9 to 10, and I'll bring you on as a, uh, I can't make you a deputy, but I can call you Jungle Rick that just came on and brought animals, the little jungle outfit on and the sheriff's hat. And you'll stop by the pet food store and I'll work it out so you can pick up certain types of pets and bring them on the show and show them. And then they draw a caricature of them and, and then they guess how much you have and then you pull out the real thing, something to that effect. I said, well, I guess I could do that. You know, I, uh, that would be kind of fun. My dad was going in for open heart surgery and he was home in bed and he wasn't supposed to do much. He's just supposed to have bed rest. So he would watch me every morning. Then I'd bring him back all my fan mail and he'd read it. And this is my introduction to being on TV. So I did it for like a year and he paid me once a week, $10 with a stack of dimes. This is how he paid me. He thought that was funny. So I did it, and um, I got to do live commercials for Langendorf Bread and some of the things back then because it was live TV. It's like a reality show, basically. And then they'd run cartoons, and I'd draw the drawing, and that would be it. But this all came about getting picked up for cure for you by a sheriff's department at 11 o'clock at night. And um, we became friends, and it just, it just seemed to work out okay. I was working out quite a bit back then, and I continued, and then I got into wrestling. And then years later, um, we decided to run, a friend of mine and I, and my first wife at the time, decided to run a wrestling show in Bakersfield. So I uh, got the, the Civic Center, and I got the Civic Auditorium, and it wasn't cheap to rent, but I rented it. And then I got all the wrestlers together, and I got two of the LA Rams. I got people that were um, involved in the business that I knew that could come down and do a show. And I said, I need a ring announcer, and I'm not sure who to call. So I called this guy, Howie Wines, and I said, how about coming down and doing the ring announcing for my wrestling show? And you're perfect for this. 
He said, okay, what do I have to do? I said, just get in the ring and pull down the microphone and announce who's in each corner and then get out of the ring. So he got all dressed up in this nice sport coat and he comes down there and I don't know if you guys know Jack Armstrong was a wrestler. He was a friend of mine. And he says, watch this. He says, I'm, you know, he's supposed to be the, a maniac wrestler. He's crazy Jack Armstrong, like wild man, they call him. He gets in the ring and how he's announcing him, that's not the way you announce me. You have to do it this way. And he grabbed his jacket and completely ripped it to shreds off his body. Completely ripped it all the way off and threw it out into the crowd. Howie looks at me and he looks at him and he comes backstage. He says, now, that was a new jacket. You guys are going to have to buy me a new one. I didn't know that was going to happen. And I said, hey, it's all part of the business. That's what we do. So uh, that's how that worked out. And it was really funny because uh, you never know where life's going to go. And then years later, I hear on the news, I'm, I'm, I'm going about 30 years later, 40 years later, living down here. What happened to Howie Wines? And he says, oh, he got arrested as a pedophile. I had no idea. But he had a kid's show, so maybe that's all kind of played hand in hand. But um, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Me, we had a good time doing it. We shot some tapes for TV, and we ran up in Fresno and Bakersfield, and we made a regular show out of it, uh, like you see now on WWE. And uh, it was my first venture into something like that, and I had a good time doing it. So I wanted to share that with you because those are things that happen that you never know. And, and then that same year, I think it was my senior year of high school, I went down to uh, Newport, Balboa, to, for the Easter vacation. And I was working out, I went to Zuper's gym, if you've ever heard of that, it's a pretty decent gym. It's uh, very unique, it was almost like a museum. And we're working out, we're going to parties, we're running back and forth here and there, and then when I went back to the place I was staying, there was eight of us staying there, and I had a beer in my hand, and here comes the, uh, alcoholic beverage control. They're going to arrest all of us. So they take me in. Um, I said, hold on a minute. I went to the bathroom and I had to chew up a fake ID that I had. They put me in the back of a panel truck and they took me to jail in Newport Beach. Put me in a cell with a blanket. And they said, well, I don't know. If we really don't want to keep you here. There's too many derelicts and I don't think you need to be around that. You have somebody you can call. So I called my parents and my parents said, well, we're not coming down to Newport from Bakersfield, but your uncle lives in Encino. I'm going to call him. So here he comes and he bails me out. It's two in the morning. He says, "All right, we're we're taking you out of here. Do you uh, you're going to go back home to Bakersfield?" I said, "Well, I think I'm just going to stay here for the rest of the week. I already paid up. I think it kind of upset him because you know he came all the way to get me. But why would I go home? I want to enjoy myself. So I ended up staying the rest of the week and had a good time and went to Zubers and worked out. Told everybody the stories. Everybody was there and it was just part of life. It was just." part of what we did and that was a lot of fun but I wanted to share that story with you because it uh, those are moments in history in my life that really meant something and I look back on them now and I still laugh at it because it was I probably would have never done that a million years a day if I had the same knowledge thank you for watching Rick's Corner and I'm going to try to come up with some more uh, stories from the past I have to really do some hard thinking but I want to give you a good uh, story now through all this virus thing we're going through it's nice to have something fun to listen to Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code DRAYSON12 on the link below at oldschoollabs.com. Hey, everyone. Now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson, personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it. And I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrayson.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding.
Rick Grayson. He's the equalizer, baby. See you next time.